Hello, you are listening to The Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one bestselling author. You can find out more about me and my work at katherinekerrigan.com and unlimitedenergynow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how you can heal yourself naturally. Now, I am so excited about our show today. I have wanted to interview Don Dennis for years. So I finally convinced him. You are in for a serious treat. Don Dennis is the founder of Living Tree Orchid Essences in on the Isle of Gia in Scotland, which is one of the most beautiful places on the face of the earth. You can find out more about Don Dennis and Living Tree Orchid Essences at his website, healingorchids.com. Welcome, Don Dennis. Thank you. Now, Don Dennis, sometimes people ask me, I've been asked over the past 29 years in natural healing, people ask me, what do you think are the most powerful natural healing remedies? And without blinking an eye, I always say, flower essences and there's flower essences and there's orchid flower essences which is what you make don dennis founder of living tree orchid essences what exactly are orchid flower essences uh, well can i start with what are flower essences first absolutely our audience would appreciate that okay so basically that is, uh, you work with the principle that we all, uh, all living things, in fact, everything has a bioelectric field. And a, a flower essence is made by transferring some of that bioelectric energy, some of that chi from the flower to water. Okay. And then you eventually, it was discovered by old Dr. Batch in the 1930s in, in England that you could retain that chi in the liquid by adding some alcohol to the water. That's the purpose of the alcohol in the water. It's really nothing other than just to give it shelf life. If you don't have the alcohol, <clears throat> then the, that bioelectric charge that's in the water will dissipate within a few days at the, at the outside. So what exactly are orchid flower essences? So it's... It's a very interesting development. Um, prior to about 25 years ago, if you looked around the world at a few hundred different essence makers, some of them included some essences with orchids, um, but they weren't singled out for having special qualities. And really, I have to say that the pioneer of this field, in my view, was, um, well, there were two people, but the one that I look to is a woman named Shabit Sagit Khalsa, or known to her friends as SSK, a Californian woman who, after founding, co-founding the Alaskan Flower Essence Project over 30, 35 years ago, ended up in California with friend making flower essences with orchids that were growing in a greenhouse. And that was the major, major change. Um, SSK herself, who's about the same age as me, said that initially when they started this commercial greenhouse, she, she began hearing the orchids calling to her saying, make essences with us, make essences with us. She's that kind of clairaudient person, always hearing nature spirits talking. And she just thought oh, they're, they're barmy. I mean, I can't make an essence with a, a plant that's growing in a greenhouse. It's too artificial an environment. She'd spent years up in the Alaskan wilderness making flower essences with flowers that were growing out in the tundra. And you really couldn't have had a more pristine environment for flower essence making than, than Alaska. So it was a big, big conceptual challenge to SSK to, to think of making an essence in a greenhouse environment. And, um, but the, she said the orchids were really insistent um, you've got to make an essence with us. <laughs> and, and so she 
relented and, and began doing it. And when I encountered her essences at the Fintorn Flower Essence Conference uh, back in 1996, I think it was, I was blown away. I had never experienced any flower essence that had the potency of her orchid essences. I'd also experienced other orchid essences within other ranges, but these were orchid essences with a big difference. They came in with quite an, a, 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 a big hit. And SSK not only got opened my eyes to the potency of, of orchid essences and orchid essences being made in this way, but she also inspired me to become interested in orchids. And so after I took her to the airport to, to Heathrow, I was living down in the south of England at the time, I stopped off at a big, big garden center down there, just off the M25, and bought an orchid that was a little orchid that was in bloom, kind of in honor of us acting as her importer for her uh, dancing light orchid essences. And in the months that followed, it went out of bloom and just grew and grew and. Uh, and she came back to visit and she said, oh, it's a fragment pidium. You need to water it every day. Unlike most orchids, the frags really like a lot of water. And it just continued to grow very well. And about nine months after it's after I bought it, it came back into bloom. And I'd have to say, I'm not somebody that, I, I'm not clairaudient as such. I'm not clairvoyant. I, I don't have any pronounced intuitive gift, okay? I would say if I have any kind of gift, it's like peripheral vision. I sense things over there or sense things over there. I'm, I'm sensitive to the periphery, but I can't see diddly squat what's <laughs> right in front of me, okay? Um, and yet, despite not being a particularly sensitive person, this one night after I had watered this uh, lovely pink orchid, this Phragmopidium hanapopo, um, as I was putting, as I was carrying it back to put it on the shelf after watering it in the kitchen sink, it spoke to me. Uh, it absolutely spoke to me. It, it said, make an essence with me. And I was really taken aback. I, as I recall, I think it was so clear a communication. I mean, here were my thoughts kind of going along this way. And this other thought from it came out of the blue, very bold stated and very easily heard and um and i think i as i recall i spoke back to it and said no, no you got the wrong guy i'm a, i'm an essence importer uh, distributor but i'm not an essence maker um but a few days later i had an old clairvoyant friend stop by peter tad and i showed him the orchid and i mentioned this experience and he said oh yeah you could see that she wanted me to make an essence with her. And I said, why? Why me? Oh, he said, Don, that's obvious. The heartfelt connection that you have. And so that's how the very first of our orchid essences came about. Um, it was set up that night and uh, finished the following morning, which is a whole story in itself. But um, that led to the, that was the, the essence that we call unveiling affection. And right from the, the word go, we saw in the weeks that followed the tremendous potency of the orchid essences made in this fashion that I'd, I'd learned of sort of from, from SSK. And she would have you just placing the uh, orchid over a bowl of water and leaving it there for some hours, okay? And after she could see after some time, oh, it's okay, it's ready now. But when I mentioned it to Peter, I said, in the morning, we looked at the orchid hovering over the bowl of water, and I said, Peter, what's going on? And he said, well, there's all this light from the orchid hovering over the water, but it's not in the water. You'll have to do something about that. So I mentioned to him how these folks in Australia that make the living essences of Australia, how they pour water over a bloom into a bowl. And he said, yeah, it might help. So he wandered off and I went into the kitchen, got a little beaker and I dipped, here's my hand. 
I dipped <laughs> the beaker into the water and just gently poured it over the bloom back into the bowl. And then I found Peter and he said, yep, that's done it. And uh, then added the brandy in a 50-50 mix. And that was the, the first mother tincture. Um, we yeah. pretty quickly found the, by taking it ourselves, we, we discovered its pri primary qualities of how it, it was nurturing to the heart chakra. Um, it, 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 most people taking unveiling affection will experience it simply as a warm glow in the heart. But if you pay close attention, it's, what it's also doing is helping you to love yourself. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful story. Now for our audience, when anyone asks me as a medical intuitive healer, what are flower essences? I explain it like this. Flower essences are vibrational remedies that balance the emotional, mental, and, and spiritual aspects of you. Because whenever we are suffering from a disease or illness, there's going to be imba an imbalance or imbalances on the emotional, mental, and spiritual levels. And as we address and balance out the spiritual, mental, and emotional issues, then the root causes of illness can go away. And when people ask me about orchid essences, what I point out is that orchids are the most evolved flowers on the face of the earth. So yep. if you think about plants like ferns, for example, are pretty much the same that they were at the time of the dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> but orchids continue to evolve and they are the most evolved flowers. So when we're wanting to make remedies that really address what's happening now for the current vibration, for the issues of our time, and also for those of us who are very serious about our own spiritual ascension, the orchid essences are really perfect. Well, so I, I usually put it a little bit differently. I think your description is perfect, okay? Um, the but I like to make it a little simpler for people. I say that an orchid essence, it's like having a conversation with an orchid, mm. but you're drinking that conversation, okay? You're imbibing some of the consciousness of the orchid. Now, somebody then might say, well, why would I want to do that? And I've thought about that a lot over the years. Orchids have evolved, not simply over 100 million years and so on, but um they've they actually i think they've been mirroring the evolution of mankind that our evolution has been going on probably for the same similar length of time and um and, and it gets a little bit further out there um one orchid specialist a, a guy not into essences he was simply into the native orchids of britain told me in the local pub about 15 years ago that um, they had people had done experiments and found that orchid seed, which is tiny, it's like talcum powder, okay, typically, um, orchid seed, you can freeze it down to close to absolute zero to the temperature of outer space. And then it still will um, germinate. So it's still viable. So in other words, what he was saying was you could have orchid seed that let's say gets blasted by an asteroid impact into outer space and then floats through the cosmos for a hundred billion years lands on a suitable planet and germinates that's actually physically possible it's uh, so um orchids may have been evolving for an awfully long time and they carry if this is the other thing that i say about orchids if you want to find the buddhas of the flower of the plant kingdom, look to the orchids. Roses are beautiful and roses are red and roses are, you know, have an impact on the crown chakra and the heart chakra and they're lovely. But there's, there literally is this extraordinary evolution of consciousness in the orchid kingdom. Not all orchids, okay? Not every single one of them. But if you're gonna look for that level of, of evolution, it is in the orchid kingdom. Yes, and you and I are both 
uh, orchid enthusiast, if you go to katherinekirigan.com, you can see photos that I've taken of my orchids. Not as stupendous. Don Dennis not only raises orchids for his living tree orchid essences, but he's also an incredible orchid photographer. But if you look into an orchid, it, their little faces, they look like a little deity sitting on a throne. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. yeah, I, I, thank you, because I wanted to mention that on our website, on healingorchids.com, particularly on the single essences page, which you navigate on the right-hand side of our, menu, of our website, on that single essences page, there's little thumbnail photos of each of the orchids. You can click on the thumbnail and it'll get much bigger on your screen. But underneath there is a, a button saying more photos. And if you click on the more photos button, you'll go to this sort of hidden part of our website. It's a, a page devoted to each essence, to each orchid. And I can have anywhere from two or three to five, six, seven photos. And each of the ones that you see on that page, you can click on and enlarge. So we have hundreds and hundreds of high quality photos of the orchids that we have worked with over the years on our website that you can view in, in glorious big color. Fabulous. Now with that, let's take a moment to take a break and listen to a message from one of our commercial sponsors here at UK Health Radio. And we'll be right back with Don Dennis, the founder of Living Tree Orchid Essences. So Don Dennis, you and I are both orchid enthusiasts and we could talk for hours <laughs> and get super excited about orchids and why they're so special. Flower essences, as many of us know, are generally taken internally. So if you're listening to this broadcast and you say, wow, I really want to try some living tree orchid essences, typically you put them under your tongue. There's an acupuncture point directly under your tongue. And when you put the essence directly under your tongue, it goes into your entire acupuncture system. And you put them either directly under your tongue, a few drops, say one to three drops, or you put one to three drops in a water bottle and drink throughout the day. So typically flower essences being vibrational remedies, you want to take them frequently throughout the day and an easy way to do it is to put it in your water bottle. But in addition, may, may, go ahead. May I interrupt? Yes. Um, it, it probably works. Not, not. It's not a bad way to do it. But my own preference is to encourage people to take the drops straight from the bottle um, and not dilute. Uh, the reason for that is because of the level of impact. And, and it's also there's this other issue in the whole field of flower essences. A lot of people think that you can dilute flower essences to a to a level that they call dosage, like making a dosage bottle, um, and and they think that because Nikki, uh, oh, sorry, I'm losing the name, the lady that ran the Batch Center after Dr. Batch recommended this procedure. She said instead of taking the the stock bottle essence straight away, put a few drops into another bottle and add water to that. And that's called the dosage bottle. And that's fine. Take the essences that way. There is in our research over 25 years, absolutely no merit in that suggestion. Mm. People think that it's okay to dilute flower essences because they think that they're like homeopathic medicines and dilution either makes no difference or maybe potentizes it. And it's a, it's a big widespread confusion in the flower essence field because homeopathy involves dilution. Okay, it's, all, it's fine to dilute in flower essences. No, there are two very different fields. Homeopathy has dilution and succussion a vigorous shaking involved at each level of dilution. We, we're, so we're not talking about that. If 
you dilute a flower essence, it becomes less potent in the same way that turning the dial down on an adjustable light turns down that energy. And sometimes this is critical. Almost all of our essences are sold at stock strength. The only exceptions are with two of our essences where we sell them as undiluted mother tincture. Mm. Okay. We have an essence that is called soul's grief release mm. and made with a, a lovely, simple little orchid from South America that is very widespread. It's, it's found in all the rainforests of South America, basically. Um, but you could walk along in, you could walk into the greenhouse where I might have 50 orchids in bloom and you wouldn't even see it. It's, it's a very humble, unassuming bloom. Um, but it has this exceptional, extraordinary quality. It is a little bit like, well, if I, if, if I just propose that reincarnation, to my mind, is, is a given. It's, it's just true. We've had hundreds and hundreds of lifetimes. And if you allow that, even if, if, even if you dis disagree, if, if it, religiously you feel, no, 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 no. Okay, then take it as poetry. So from a poetic standpoint, just imagine if you lived hundreds of lifetimes, what would, what would be the answer if you say, how many times have you not experienced sorrow in a lifetime? Mm -hmm. That whether it's war or famine or earthquakes, you know, it just... We see it all the time. I, I would think out of a thousand lifetimes, you, you probably wouldn't have one life in which there's no sorrow. And sorrow is grief that's profound. Okay. And because it's profound, it goes deep within our soul. And as such, we end up having a tendency to carry some of that from one lifetime to another. So somebody might have a, a an abiding sense of melancholy that they don't have any idea why it's not they can't trace it to anything in their childhood maybe they had an entirely happy childhood but yet they have this abiding sense of melancholy that's there in their quiet moments and in my view it's almost certainly because it's sorrow that the soul has retained from past lives and this Orchid Essence, the soul's grief release, takes about 30 minutes to dissolve it. One dose, uh, I think it's nine drops of the mother tincture, um, and it's just under the tongue and sit with it. It'd be almost a crime to take the drops the first time and then just go and do your shopping. You sit with it with your eyes shut in a quiet room where nobody's going to disturb you for half an hour. And in that time, it dis it's dissolving this accumulation of sorrow. Now, I say to people, it's a bit like going to the dentist and getting your teeth cleaned. You're getting the plaque removed, okay? It doesn't mean the dentist isn't going to say to you, oh, you're never going to have any more plaque, okay? This essence doesn't turn you into a Buddha. It's not, it's not saying you will never have any more sorrow, but it's just allowing you to let go of some of the accumulation. And now here's the thing. We found in the first year after we released that one, that when we diluted it just down to stock, that people had the same experience of it dissolving the sorrow. But unfortunately, it took a week. Mm. And it wasn't a particularly pleasant week mm. because you're kind of letting go of all this accumulated profound grief. Okay. So after a year, we, we had enough feedback. We realized, okay, well... We've got to let this one be sold as undiluted mother tincture. So it's just to illustrate that dilution in the field of flower essences does make a difference. And the optimum impact with our orchid essences is for people to take those essences as indicated on the label. And usually it's three drops. Sometimes we say four drops. We never say one drop uh, or two. They're always either three or four or five. One, I think, is maybe six, and and two or three are seven, and and there's a couple of them that are nine drops. Um, 
we, we do muscle testing, the kinesiological testing to determine what is the optimum dose for each orchid. Um, and, um, and that's so that somebody can have the, the, the optimum experience of that orchid's energy and consciousness. Um, and you're probably wanting me to ask Rona to not appear in the camera at the <laughs> other window. Yes. Rona. Yes. Stay out of the camera. <laughs> so, so once we take these, and I'm, I'm, I, right now I'm taking one of Don Dennis's. Uh, it's a combination essence called memory enhancer. So once we take these, okay. All right. How frequently do you, so I just took three drops under my tongue. So how frequently do you recommend that we take the essence throughout the day? So I generally recommend five times a day. So what's your thought? Well, probably if, if you were doing one or two drops or three drops, then, then five times a day might be about right. But um, with the optimum number of drops, we would usually indicate twice a day, at most three times a day. Um, and But probably the more important principle for us is don't take a bunch of different essences on the same day. Yes. We which, did that in seminar, Catherine, but that's exceptional. That's that's a learning situation where I'm paying attention to what's going on and we can process through things that arise. Um, but if somebody says, well, I, I mean, we've had customers who say, well, I take this essence and this essence, this essence and, and I take them all at the same time. And so it's like, well, would you listen to Mozart and Beethoven <laughs> and Bob Marley together all at the same time? Like, no. Yes. You, know, it, you end up with a cacophony energetically in the body. Um, so, um, so by there's a there's a sorry, you, there's a really, <laughs> I didn't answer your question. I would say you, typically a fortnight. Sorry, typically two weeks, um, but it does vary. We've had people who only needed one or two hits of an essence, and other people who needed to keep taking an essence for five or six weeks. It just depends upon the circumstance, but in general, you'd say, keep taking it for two weeks. That's gonna be the most. But the most important time that you take it is the first, the very first time that you take an essence, okay? It's all, the second most important time is the second time you take it. And here's where I want to mention this principle, something that, that I call a category two response. A category one response is what you expect. You take an essence for anxiety, let's say, and you're feeling anxious. So you take the drops, you feel less anxious. That's a category one. That's simple, right? It's, it's going with expectations. Category two is when you take one of the orchid essences. I've not seen this with many other essence lines otherwise, but with the orchids, it can happen that you take a, a, one of our essences for the very first time and almost immediately, I mean, within 15, 20 seconds, you suddenly feel some kind of discomfort that can either be, ooh, my shoulder is really tight, or I feel like crying, or there's a pain in my solar plexus, okay? Any kind of discomfort. It can even be an imbalance, like, oh, suddenly you just feel odd. Then the instruction from me is now, take the essence a second time. And let me explain. In order to survive being human, <laughs> we have this ability to sweep pain under the carpet. We can sweep trauma under the carpet. <clears throat> we end up walking across a really lumpy carpet in our lives, mm. okay? <laughs> and so, it takes some effort to lift the carpet and see what's under it. And usually most people will go to a therapist for years yeah. to try and get at the lumps under their carpet. The beauty of the orchid essences and the potency of them is that with each particular orchid essence, it'll attune to different lumps under your carpet. And so the very first time that you take it, the discomfort arises from the fact that what the orchid is doing is saying, oh, let's lift this carpet. Oh, looky here, what have we got? And you're looking at 
without knowing what it is, without recognizing it, you're seeing the stuff that's been swept under the carpet. And so that's uncomfortable. Um, I would say that this can happen about 60 to 70% of the time if somebody's paying attention when they take our orchid essence the very first time, okay? And the important thing for people to understand is that that's good. That's, that's like bullseye. This is the orchid saying, ha, we found some trauma that needs to be cleared. Now, when you take the essence the second time, then the orchid allows the, the, uh, the stuff that's been swept under the carpet to be swept away. It resolves it, it clears it. Um, but the very first time, it's bringing it into conscious awareness. And that's a very important part of the healing process. So category two responses are something that I expect. And unfortunately, if you don't understand this principle at work, you can take one of our essences, feel discomfort, and think, oh, I hate those essences because they made me feel uncomfortable. But no, they were actually doing this healing process. So it's it's a really important thing. You don't take the essence three or four times in that first hour, just a second time, okay? If you take it a third time, you begin to have the risk because you're taking undiluted stock. There's a risk that you're getting kind of an overdose of energy of this bioelectric charge from the orchid. So if it's a proper category two response, the second time you take the drops, you should feel an immediate uh, relief from that discomfort. Great and explanation. 95% of the time, that is what happens. And with that, let's take another break and listen to a message from one of our commercial sponsors here at UK Health Radio. And we'll be right back with Don Dennis, the founder of Living Tree Orchid Essences. So Don Dennis, founder of Living Tree Orchid Essences, when I'm working with clients around the world and recommending Living Tree Orchid Essence, I'm always listening at the soul level, how much they should take, how often should they take it, how long they should take it. And so basically what you're recommending is that we take them directly from the bottle and typically for two weeks, unless a practitioner is recommended otherwise. How many orchid essences can do you recommend a person take at one time? Because as humans, we can have a lot of issues. And when we're dealing with illness, there can be multifaceted reasons, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, that or energetically, that we're holding on to that illness. Well, I, I would often say to people that ideally you don't take more than two in a day. And one of those would be taken in the morning, one in the evening. OK, um, another way to work it, if you have, say, three or four essences that you feel you need to take or that your client needs to take is to do either a three day cycle or a week cycle. And and so you take essence A for three days, twice a day. Then you take essence B for three days, twice a day, then essence C for three days, twice a day. It's, it takes a little bit longer, but it's more effective. It, it also brings um, you or, or the client more clarity as to what is being addressed with each of those essences. It gives them a, more of a reference point later on when they feel that, oh, I think I maybe need that essence again. It's a way of getting to know it. Um, and at the end of doing three days of each of the essence, then start again three days more of essence A and then essence B and then essence C. Uh, or it can be a week that you're taking it and then another week for essence B and then an, a, a week for essence C. Catherine, before we move on to anything else, though, I wanted to mention two things. Um, and I feel that this one is important. 
um, what, there's there's somebody out there in the essence world that made an, a really important contribution to orchid essence making. Um, and that's a fellow named Andreas Corte from Germany. He was the first person to talk about how orchid essences act upon chakras that are above the body. Okay. Above the crown of the head. Right. Above the crown. Out of, I mean, out of body it, chakras. Yes. Yeah. The, the crown chakra is really the first of these because it isn't in the body. It's, it's just floats above the top of the head. But there's a whole series of, of chakras, of energy centers that are above that, above the crown chakra. And this is one of the things that it set, makes orchids really special, is that they have this ability to act on those higher chakras. Okay? And Andreas was the first person in the, in the flower essence world to talk about that. Um, I attended some of his seminars. You know, so I heard him talking about this. Um, what he didn't do for me was he did not inspire an interest in orchids. That was that was SSK. Uh, she was passionate about orchids, and and that that got me interested. But I, I feel it's important to state uh, precedence. And and Andreas was the first guy, first person out there to talk about these higher the higher chakra activity. One of the curious things about it is that if let's say. Joe Smith makes an essence with an orchid and Joe Smith doesn't have that if Joe's higher chakras are sleeping then the essence that Joe makes with that orchid will not have higher chakra activity the human being that is involved in the essence making has a kind of midwifery role I don't know if that term exists in America but you're helping to birth the essence because you have to, you as the human, in by dint of who you are and, and what energy centers are awake, you're inviting the energies from the orchid in. And the first couple of years of my essence making, I look back on them and it's like, it's interesting. The orchid essences that I made in the first couple of years didn't have higher chakra activity because my higher chakras were sleeping. <laughs> it was only after several years of, of working with my friend Heather, who's like this beacon of light above her head, you know, I mean, just, um, I, I joke that Heather's the person that makes me believe that angels sometimes in, incarnate, you know, so after a while of being around somebody who had much higher chakra activity and then involved in an activity that kind of required it, then yeah, they, they began waking up and then essences that I made by myself brought that energy in. But so it's a bit like seeing a, a, a note on a songboard that has a high C, but you can't sing high C. You're not gonna then sing high C. So it, let's it, point out for our audience, the benefit for our audience taking and using these living tree orchid essences is that they do help us to awaken our spiritual connection, our intuition and our energetic connection to the universe. And yeah. that's what I'm saying Absolutely. is that they're the orchids are the most evolved flowers on the face of the earth. And they help literally help us wake up spiritually, which is part of why they're my favorite orchid essences. I, I came around after many years of the essence making with the orchids to realizing that they help us with the evolution of our soul. And um, and so an example of that is with one that we have called True Connections, which um, if you think of Star Wars <laughs> and Obi-Wan Kenobi, right? And when the Death Star has destroyed a planet and he says, I felt a, a shudder in the force. Um, there, there, Somehow or other, George Lucas, in writing the Star Wars, tapped into something real. When there, there's a part of the higher chakras that enable us to link to the rest of humanity. It's kind of the international, worldwide human web. Mm -hmm. And through that, we can sense things. And, and so this one essence called True Connections helps with that structure above the head. Uh, to help us to 
meet the people that we need to meet. Mm. Okay. It's tendrils of light going out there and helping to make the connection. Yes. All right. The, the higher chakras are, aren't just a kind of amorphous blob of light. There are very specific structures that have very specific functions, just as say the heart chakra has its own beautiful, deep structure and the, the solar plexus, et cetera. You know, there, there are different functions energetically that uh, are served through the different chakras. And, and pr really profound healing is able to take place. But I've always said that the orchids have this interesting dual personality. They are remedies and they are also enhancers. It's kind of like that old Steven Seagal movie, uh, Under Siege, where he's a cook on the on the on the navy ship, and he says, "Yeah, well, I also cook." Uh, the, for the orchids, healing our trauma is simple, <laughs> and so that very first one that I mentioned, the unveiling affection, we found in the months that followed the making of it that if somebody had the experience, unfortunately, of sexual abuse in childhood, then their heart chakra is closed at a really deep level. And what unveiling affection will do for that person the very first time they take it is almost instantly. I mean, you're talking of a millisecond. After the drops are under the tongue, that the orchid consciousness goes in there and says, oh, we don't need to have that five foot thick steel door locking your heart chakra. Let's just melt that steel door. Let's open up the heart chakra. And suddenly for the first time in decades, their heart chakra is opened at that deep level that they had not experienced since childhood. And so we learned that unveiling affection is not in essence to give to somebody in an unsupported environment as a first thing. <laughs> There's many, many uh, other orchid essences that, that can be uh, easier to work with, but, um, but for the person that had that kind of case history, it, it's a profound shift. Now, I wanna make a comment as a medical intuitive healer, because I do recommend not only living tree orchid essences, but the Bach flower remedies, which are available usually in health food stores. And, you know, the Bach flowers, I find definitely work when you dilute them, when you put them in your water bottle. And what this is my observation, when you're taking a Bach flower remedy in general, and I'm making a general terminology, you're working a lot with your shadow self and with your resolving ego issues. And the orchid essences are, in my view, working more at the soul level. What is your observation, Don Dennis? Because I know that you do carry, um, as a distributor, essences from all over the world. Well, we, we carry one range of batch re remedies made by Healing Herbs um, down, down in Herefordshire in England. Um, they make them rigorously according to the original instructions. <laughs> yeah, it, it, there's one that, there's one story that comes to mind. Um, sometimes over the years of the essence making, I've had um, an understanding that would come through my dreams of a healing quality. That's I, It's not something I can rely on. I can't say, okay, we've got a new essence. I need a dream. But it, sometimes really interesting, very clear information has come through. And several years ago, we created a, a range of seven uh, essences that we call the orchid elemental essences. So there's an orchid metal and an orchid earth and an orchid fire, and so on. And the orchid metal element, I had a very clear dream about seeing a, a, an old classmate of mine that I had learned years later had been a victim of sexual abuse as a young girl. Mm. And we were simply in a London tube, tube train and we were the only two people on the tube and she was looking straight at me and she just had this like bitter grief look on her face. Um, and then suddenly I'm in a basement of a London 
building and there's sand in the very bottom of the basement and there are these bottles they're sitting on the sand and these bottles contained a very 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 bitter liquid and i'm wondering what should i do with this liquid i knew that if i opened the bottles up and poured them into the sand the toxicity would spread through through the city that it was too bitter to do that with and i it crossed my mind that there was a batch remedy that would help with bitterness but i also knew that it wasn't um profound enough that it, it couldn't reach this level of bitterness and then i woke up and i realized ah th because this was immediately after the making of the orchid metal element essence and and my trying the mother tincture and it helped me to understand that's what in my view the, the most important function of this orchid metal element is for people who have had uh, abuse history because a very difficult part to treat is this profound bitterness that they will hold on to as like a last kernel of, of the wounding. Mm. And, and so the orchid metal element is beautiful because it, it goes in very directly to heal that, that bitterness, just straight away heals it. It's uh, astonishing. So I, I, that's how I think of the difference in a sense with the, orchid essences versus batch flower remedies. Um, it's about the level of, ac of action that um, the orchid essences are kind of like, to use the advertising thing, the, the Heineken of the, <laughs> of the flowers. <laughs> they can reach the parts that other flower essences don't. Um, so, yeah. So final question for our audience today, as you work, in creating these essences. And before we started, you said you don't view yourself as a creator. We're listening to the orchids who want to make remedies for mankind. How do you go about, once an orchid essence is created, how do you go about discovering the healing properties of that essence? Yeah, um, well, I'd say what's really important in that endeavor is to have a small team of people that you trust that are close to what you, you describe yourself, you know, medical intuitives, people whose intuition is very clear. And that's important. People can be very intuitive and not be clear, but uh, it, to have clarity combined with in. A, a strong intuition we can send we will send a new essence say to our, our lovely distributor in japan junko and we will send an essence to a, a colleague that we know in in england in the midlands and we send an essence to our colleague adrian dr brita babapule down in the south of england that's vital adrian over the years became absolutely key to our process um, because he will use a very advanced form of kinesiology to uh, discern more detail about the healing qualities of a given essence. But there's maybe four or five different people when there's a new essence that we will send the essence to and get feedback from them all. Um, if, if Adrian were the one making the essences all the time, um, and he's made a few, He's the kind of person that would just immediately know. He looks, he would look at an orchid and say, "Ah, this yes. is going to do that." You know, Shadow Warrior was like that. Um, Spirit of the high, Higher Heart was like that. He, he just knows. He's he's got this extraordinary intuitive gift. Personally, I find it best for me to not try and second guess. And so, the most important part of the process for me is that first time that I sip the mother tincture, and then I will sit for twenty minutes to half an hour and just see, I try to be a blank canvas and see what it has to share. You've okay. been listening to The Natural Healing Show for UK Health Radio. And we've been listening to Don Dennis, the founder of Living Tree Orchid Essences. 
My name is Katherine Kerrigan, medical intuitive healer, Amazon number one best-selling author. You can find out more about me and my work at KatherineKerrigan.com and UnlimitedEnergyNow.com. While you're there, definitely sign up for my newsletter so you can learn even more about how you can heal yourself naturally. Our guest today has been the one and only Don Dennis, founder of Living Tree Orchid Essences. And you can find out more about Don Dennis and his wonderful work at healingorchids.com. And remember, when you're wanting to uplift your soul and work at a really deep level in your healing process, definitely, I recommend turn to the orchid world. They really uplift your soul at a very profound level. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.